Here's the theory. A Paladin plus Druid multiclass for lots of really big smites, lots of tanky temporary hit points, and a fun Batman plus Poison Ivy themed character. Let's jump into it. Welcome back to Creative Excuses. Today, I am theorycrafting a new build for a fresh honor mode run that I will be live streaming on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern time over at twitch.tv slash creative excuses. I wanna thank everyone who has watched so far as we hit level four last week and prepared to save the Grove. And I also want to thank everyone who has subscribed for these videos. The support for my Baldur's Gate 3 content has been insane and I really do appreciate it. All right, let's theorycraft this paladin, the Underdark Knight. To theorycraft this build, we need to ask ourselves one question. What is the most exciting thing you can do as a paladin? I think there's two answers to this question, depending on which kind of player you are. First, for the more gameplay-centric player, the most exciting thing you can do as a paladin is this. Dropping massive smites for massive damage as the player is insanely fun. Just listen to that sound effect and watch those juicy numbers roll by. It's amazing. Second, for the more story-centric player, Paladins have the best roleplay options in the entire game, which is super exciting. What? I thought Bards had the best... No. No, Bards are cool, but Paladins can make story choices that affect their builds, because there's always the threat of becoming an Oathbreaker if you go against the core tenets of your Paladin Oath. Story decisions have build consequences beyond just your gear. For example, if you don't pet the best boy as an Oath of Ancients Paladin, boom, you're an Oathbreaker Death Knight now. No other class gets this kind of roleplay flavor and consequences attached to their decisions. So how do we put these two things together? By multiclassing, of course, there are lots of options to get a really strong Paladin multiclass build. Sorcerer and Bard are the super common and disgustingly strong ones, of course. Warlocks also make excellent Paladins with their ability to make their melee attacks with Charisma, which Paladins already want for their class features. But I think there is another full caster class that makes just as fun and powerful of a Paladin as those other options. Druid. More specifically, Spore Druid. Spore Druid gives a Paladin so much. First, it gives Paladins the spell slots that they so desperately want. If you go with two levels of Paladin and then the rest in Spore Druid, you keep very solid pace with spell slot progression like all of the other full casters or like a 10-2 Swords Bard Paladin, but you get some really cool features alongside that excellent spell slot progression. These big spell slots, of course, are super important though because they are what's gonna get you those big juicy smites and many of them throughout a day of combat. This is very helpful both in terms of damage and in terms of resources because typically, without caster levels, paladins are very long rest dependent due to their half caster status. They just don't normally get a lot of spell slots, but with the druid levels, you're set. On top of the many and large smites you can get, you also get one very cool feature called Symbiotic Entity, which makes your weapon attacks deal an additional 1d6 of necrotic damage. This is excellent alongside dual wielding weapons because it makes your standard smiteless damage per turn somewhere in the range of 4d6 plus your dex or strength modifier. That is a lot of dice being rolled for damage, and that is without touching your smite attacks. This further reduces the strain on spell slots and resources so that you can really burst enemies down when you want to while remaining threatening throughout the rest of the fight. However, Symbiotic Entity only applies while, go figure, your Symbiotic Entity temporary hit points hold up. But this is actually a benefit for two reasons. First, it means setting up your symbiotic entity is a heal that cannot be prevented by bone chill or other heal preventing effects, which should prove very good for a certain act two boss that likes to apply bone chill on melee enemies. Second, this lets us get away with a lot lower constitution score than we would normally want because we can beef up our maximum hit points twice per short rest. If we stack some damage reduction like Heavy Armor Master, Adamantine Splint Mail, or even Warding Bond on top of those HP, our health bar will oftentimes be untouchable, making us very tanky and very safe, at least from smaller hits. There are additional combat benefits in the late game for a Spore Paladin, of course, but just as important as all these awesome combat features are is the fact that the Spore Druid has a very clear thematic link to an important environment in Act 1, the Underdark. 
Spore Druids are themed after the Underdark and its fungal everything, with features like Spore Clouds or Fungal Infestation, which allows you to raise the dead just like the Myconids. This provides fantastic roleplay fuel and story potential for a Paladin, as you can very easily craft yourself a story about a protector and lover of the Underdark, a concrete place that you can spend a lot of time exploring and eradicating evil from in Act 1. Basically, if Batman and Poison Ivy had a child, you can be that character. A spore druid of vengeance with an oath to protect the Underdark from every evil and vile threat. So that is the basic theory and fun of how these two classes synergize. Now, onto the nitty gritty. I think this build is going to function best as a dexterity based paladin so that I can dual wield some light weapons and still smite up to twice per turn without having access to extra attack. In the late game, in Act 3 though, this build will work really well with the Duelist prerogative because of its bonus action attack being full powered and benefiting from the dueling fighting style for more damage. It's also like a plus three weapon, which is sick. Now, even though I plan on spending most of my spell slots on smites, I would be dumb not to take advantage of a lot of the excellent spells that a druid gets like Hold Person for automatic critical hits, Spike Growth, Moonbeam, Wall of Fire, Ice Storm, and even Cloud Kill. Some of these are incredibly strong, and the ones that I just named all have save DCs based on wisdom, which means two things for us. First, we're going to need to get like at least 16 wisdom. And second, we should probably use the Helmet of Arcane Acuity when we can get it, so that if we want to use the spell and do some big damage or crowd control, we can. Feats are also going to be a little interesting. I think Heavy Armor Master at level 6, which is when we're going to get our first feat, will make a good deal of sense, reducing physical damage by an additional 3 while wearing heavy armor. This coupled with the Adamant and Splint Mail will be like 5 damage reduction on any physical hit and 2 on magical hits. That's pretty strong. This will help me protect my temporary HP while I can use Elixirs of Hill Giant Strength or the Gloves of Dexterity to make sure that I still have enough accuracy to be useful with my smites and you know whatever else. If the reduced physical damage isn't as useful as I think it could be though, I can also go with Savage Attacker for a huge damage buff. Again, we're going to be rolling a lot of dice in melee distance, 4d6 per turn before smiting, which adds another couple d8, so Savage Attacker makes a lot of sense. I could also start out with 17 Dexterity and use Athlete to grab 18 Dexterity and improved Jumping Mobility, which will also be very strong as I will not get access to Misty Step in this 10-2 split. Honestly, I'm not sure which feats are going to be the best, so please drop a comment below with your suggestions, or better yet, join the Discord and let's chat about it. If you want to see the build in action alongside a party of other superheroes, come hang out Thursday nights from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash creative excuses. Until then, I'll see you all in the next excuse. Go to hell.